So now, in the middle of the wilderness, what does God uh, give uh, instruction to Moses? He said, put the tabernacle in the middle. And remember, as people have left Egypt, the 12 tribes of Israel, the tabernacle was in the middle. And all the tribes were pitched around the tabernacle. At the center of worship. At the center of worship should be God. In our lives, in the center of our lives, that's where God needs to be worshipped. Many a times we get caught up with putting a lot of things in the center of our lives, then we wonder what's wrong with us. Here in the tabernacle we get the picture, God's tabernacle was in the middle, his presence was there. And all the tribes of Israel would be pitched around the tabernacle. And even when they moved, they would move in that sequence. Every time the tabernacle was put up in the wilderness, each of the tribes of Israel pitched around the tabernacle. So let me say this. Right from the Old Testament, the time they left Egypt, the tribes of Israel surrounded the tabernacle. Worship was at the center of their lives. Now you remember what Satan did. He wanted to be worshipped in the place of God. And that's where the disruption came. And then he deceived Eve into eating the fruit. And disobedience entered the world. And from that disobedience came death. That even today we suffer. But there were two deaths in the, in the Old Testament. The death that happened in the Garden of Eden was first the broken fellowship between God and man. God could no longer come and commune with men as he used to. There was a wall that was set up. And the only way we can come back to God, that wall has got to be removed. Also, I want to mention to you, here where God's presence was in his temple, when Jesus came to the temple, guess what was happening? they had turned into a flea market. Or, or we have wicked markets all over the city. And you see, this is what they turned the temple to become. So here, where God's presence was in his temple, it was replaced by commerce, business. Worship was pushed out while religion prospered. Religion can always prosper with business. But true worship either has a central place or has no place. And the church is a place where we worship Christ. We know that some people have taken Christianity and turned it into a business. Christianity can never become a business. Because business will always replace worship. In itself it becomes, making money becomes the, uh, an act of worship. The first act of the battle was declared by the great humility. Jesus comes riding on a donkey, goes to the temple, cleanses the temple. And I want you to notice something very interesting when you look at what Jesus does. He cleanses the temple, he kicks out the sellers and the buyers and the pigeons and money changers table is all overturned and he gets rid of them. And then he does something very interesting. Remember their cry? Hosanna, save us now, son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh, comes in the name of the Lord. And here we see the king in his rightful place, in the middle of the temple. And what does he do? He knows they're going to crucify him. He knows they're going to destroy him. They're going to kill him. But guess what? He initiates the battle right there. He, in fact, heals those who come to him. You see, here where God's presence was in his temple, even though it was replaced by commerce, business, uh, worship, as worship was pushed out and religion prospered, guess what the master did? He cleaned out the religious elite and he cleaned out the business and all that and he puts himself in the middle and there the second Act we will see what Christ does. He ministers 
to those with great needs. The second act of the battle was accomplished by removing the spiritual rebellion. Now you say, what, what do you mean by that? The second act of the battle was accomplished by removing spiritual rebellion. You see, no communication to the Father will take place while the obstacle of sin, a wall, is the divide separating us from our Father. So here we see the battle is initiated. He comes to show us the love of the Father, the love of the Son, the love of the Holy Spirit. He cleanses the temple. He gets it clean and takes out commerce and all the cheating and all this. Now what does he do? He sets up a healing center. People, do you see? Jesus came to heal us and to destroy the power of sin and death of our lives. You see, first we see the cleansing and then we see the healing. First we see that as Jesus came, he cleanses the temple. Now he claims his temple. Matthew 21, 13, he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. Verse 14, and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Verse 15, but when the chief priests and the scribes saw wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Verse 16, and they said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. Have you never read? Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise. Verse 17, and leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and he lodged there. So what is this big thing about the Palm Sunday? What is this the time when Jesus had a triumphal entry into Jerusalem? Well, this is where the battle was initiated, people. You see, the battle was established in Genesis. The battle is established here during the triumphal entry. And what did our Lord and Savior do? He came to the very place in the central place of worship and he took his rightful place and there he removed religion and he removed everything else and he centered himself and there he brought healing to those that needed healing today our land needs healing there's a great suffering because of this pandemic there's a great fear all over the world our uh, health authorities are just scrambling to find something an antidote against this coronavirus but let me tell you, God has already conquered. What did he conquer? And that's what we are going to see Good Friday. And we are going to see Easter Sunday as we look into God's word. What has God conquered for you and I? You see, the pandemic of sin has affected not only the earth, it has affected the whole universe. And this is why I call the series The Great Epic Battle. Because even the universe is going to be affected because of man's sin on planet Earth. So it's going to evolve around the whole thing. So in concluding this message, let me just bring this to you. Jesus is the bridge that brings us to the Father. But first he must remove the wall. Remember the wall between East Berlin and West Berlin? By the way, thank God. Because of Regan, one day he stood at that wall. He said that wall must go and the wall did come down. There was a time when people with hammers and chisels and anything they could find, they were breaking down that wall and today the wall is no more. Now do you know what? Or oh, the greater picture is this. Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior has removed that wall. And that's why we can celebrate Easter. It's a time, yes, there's a great sadness for the sufferings he went into, but there's also a great celebration because only he and he alone could bring down that wall that separates us from the Father. He must remove the wall so we could walk through the Father. In doing so, he also destroys death and sin so that eternity is restored to mankind. In the book of Ecclesiastes, he said that eternity is placed in man's heart. That's why we don't like death. That's why we fear death. Because God didn't create us to die, he created us to live forever. And Jesus will conquer death and sin once for all. Let me just remind you, you know, now there is this big thing about the buyback program. A government can come and if they want you to close certain uh, businesses, they will buy back and give you money back so you can close the business. 
there's a great buyback program in the whole universe, people. And the greatest buyback program in the whole universe was imposed by Christ himself. But who was the purchase price? Christ is the purchase price. And you and I are the recipient of the fullness of this blessing. We are the purchased ones. The Bible said, Beloved, you are a child of God. You've been bought with a price. And this is what why brings us to this time of Easter to celebrate because that was the greatest buyback program that Christ initiated. You see, the battle is initiated. The battle was established in Genesis. The battle was initiated in Christ, appearing in the temple during the time we call the triumphal entry. But now we want to pursue this further during Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Can I ask you to start thinking about the purchase power? Right now, as I close, let me remind you, our government here in Canada has put forth some money so business don't despair, so people can still get some uh, money for sustaining themselves and all that wonderful thing the government is doing. Also in America, we know $4 trillion have been set aside to help businesses and people. People, can I say to you, that's a drop in the bucket. Because Jesus offered the whole of himself on Calvary's cross. You see, the power is in the one who has the purchase power. And Christ and Christ alone has the purchase power to buy you and I back from the clutches of sin and death. And thank God he's done that. The battle is established. The battle is initiated. Now we're going to see how this battle is engaged. And then we will see the battle victorious. So hang in. Let God's truth speak to our hearts. Encourage us. There's no pandemic we need to fear because the greatest battle has already been undertaken and we are the victors in Jesus Christ. God bless you this Sunday. May God continue to encourage your hearts as we look to him during these uh, days filled with anxiety and fear. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. Lead us. Draw us. Help us to be the light the world can see that they may see Christ in us, the hope of glory. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. In Jesus' name we pray.